morning good morning hello and welcome to what i'm dubbing husky middle earth readings thank you to those of you who have sent me some good wishes i have indeed had the covid and as you can hear my throat still has it but i am feeling much better and i wanted to come and do this um this live with you this week as normal because it's quite a big week i'm feeling hopeful for some some changes in energy i think it's been a bit of a challenging week for many of us odin is in retrograde and he is not enjoying it um lots of technological issues lots of communication problems coming through and um, just general weariness is the sense that i'm getting now, maybe that's me being ill but i i do feel that from talking to people as well it's that sense that really you know it's, Winter seems to be lasting a long time and life is hard and things are difficult. And I really said that sort of dragging energy that we can get when Odin is in retrograde and he's not speeding forward in the way that he likes to. But we do have some really lovely um, planetary movements this week that I think are going to start to shift for us and going to start to open things out a little bit more. So we've got a new moon in Algiz. Uh, which is also our half month, so that means we've got the sun and the moon in Algis. So that real strong connection to um, to spirit, to that sense of um, not being alone. You know that we are being looked out for, and that we can sense and feel into that divine spark within each of us. So that's coming through with our new moon, and a new moon energy is a building energy. So. It's nice for, you know, through this period we can release old stuff, which I'm certainly doing. I've had some lovely like, cleansing baths, releasing um, lots of salts and herbs and things like that to you know, release old old stuff so that we can then use that algus energy to move forward. So I'm looking forward to the new moon tomorrow. And then we have two other planetary movements, and these are um, Thor's chariot, which is the Roman equivalent Jupiter, and Tyr's chariot, which is the Roman equivalent of Mars. Now I always think of these as being like our um, our middle resonators. So if you think about the the runes as vibrational energies, you know each of them is a sound. Each of the planets also causes its own vibrational energy. So as the planets move through the energy fields of one rune into the next, that song, that energy starts to changes, you know, the sort of vibration that's around us changes, which then causes the flow of weird to operate in a different way. And we have what I think of as being the high resonators, sun, moon, Odin's chariot, fruit's chariot, um, often working within the conscious mind, very present for us, um, very in the moment affecting our, our feelings and, you know, our moods and what's going on for us. And then we have those middle resonators um thor's chariot tears chariot loki's chariot which tend to work more a little bit more subtly a little bit more in the realm of the material world and legacy as well so that sense of the beliefs that we hold within us and not necessarily like deep in the subconscious or in the collective conscious but in that bridging space between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind often things that we've inherited um, about ourselves, things that we've taken on board, things that feel important to us in terms of my sense of who I am, um, what I stand for. You know, so often those things that, you know, when we're children and we see unfairness in the playground and we think, I will never let that happen, you know, it becomes a really big foundational piece for us that we can feel through Thor's chariot. You now, for those of you who've been doing Thor and Boundaries, we're moving into to Remove a cat from the computer. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Let go. Hello. Um, he was climbing up the computer. We're, for those of you who've been doing Thor and boundaries and breaking with me in the inner circle this month, we, will, we have been looking at that idea of Thor, you know, taking his stand and simply, you know, feeling into his, into his being. You know, this is what's important to me don't care what's going on out there and what other people are saying and doing, you know, this is what's important to me. So Thor's chariot does that, Tears chariot, that sense of, um, of action, you know, of the, the warrior self, of knowing our own truth. You know, Thor's chariot talks about knowing our own heart. Tears chariot's more about knowing our own truth. 
and then Loki's chariot, you know, that, um, that part of each of us that is designed to be the disruptor, is designed to question and challenge when we need to, and gives us that, um, that bravery in those times to sort of stand up against things that we don't always like. So they can represent both um, the legacy, you know, what we've inherited, but also our ability to challenge that legacy. So Thor's chariot and Tyr's chariot are moving. Thor's chariot is moving into Tewaz. And I was really feeling into this and thinking to myself, yeah, this is for me very much about um, judgment. And when I felt into that, I thought it's less about judging the world around us and more about us judging ourselves. You know, that we develop our codes of um, what we stand for, who we are. Sometimes when we see things happening around us that we don't like, and that gives us a sense of like who we are and what's important. And sometimes we do it through experience because we break our own boundaries. We do something that we're ashamed of um, or something that didn't feel good. And then we learn from that as well. And so Thor teaches us through Tewaz, through his position and the position of the planet within this energy of Tewaz, the rune of action and victory and success and you know, the guiding star and the warrior in motion. Um, teaches us to recognise that when we apologise for something, you know, whether we're apologising to ourselves or to another person, we are still, we are feeling beneath the shame or the, the guilt into the value of the thing that, what it is that we actually stand for, you know, in future, we will not behave in that way. I have discovered something about myself, something deep and important and meaningful. And so Thor's Chariot and Tewaz is really inviting us into that and to recognise the strength that it takes to, um, to apologise, to recognise that you've done something that you might not feel um, good about and to take the lessons from it and to follow the wisdom of the heart um, and, to, and to do that and to keep on doing that and to find the strength within that. Now that's happening on the 3rd, so it's coming quite close, we've got our Algus full moon, then we've got on the 3rd, we've got um, Thor and Tewaz, and then we have Tears chariot moving into Iwaz. So um, Thor is moving into Tewaz, Tewaz is Tears rune, Tear is moving into Iwaz. So Iwaz, the rune of um, the yew tree, the rune of defence, of the staff, you know, um, of strength, longevity, the eternal within us. And I had to feel quite deep into this one to sort of say, oh, what's happening here? And for those of you who look at the blog or you um, will see Instagram or if you've already received um, Sooner's uh, Star Wheel, your February um, planetary guide for the month ahead, for those of you who've got Sooner's Star Wheel, you'll know that I talk about the sword arm and the gallows tree and the oath ring in relation to Tears Chariot in Iwas. And this room... This position of Tears, Chariot and Iwas was really speaking to me of, um, of meaning, the way in which we shape ourselves and our environment to become um, instruments that fulfil purpose, that operate in the sense that we, un a, we, we together, collectively understand the significance of something. So, you know, the sword arm you know, it's just an arm, you know, it's just an arm, but we have, we've come to recognise, you know, the, the sword, what the sword means, and this is my sword arm, this is the way in which I manifest my will into the world, this is how I defend my, my people, my country, my beliefs, you know, whatever it is that you're standing there, so the significance of the sword arm becomes this partnership between the human being, the body of the human being, and the sword that has been forged, you know, and that we have learned how to do an object that has been forged and made. And this naming of the sword arm carries within it a lot of meaning that's not necessarily there. We learn it, we learn those meanings. The gallows tree, you know, the tree did not choose to become um, something upon which death would occur, but we call it, you know, the gallows tree. We attach meaning to it. It becomes a symbol of the journey from life into death, an unwilling journey of, often into life into death. 
a sort of a form of judgment as well if you think about the sword arm as almost taking on a persona of its own and what am I there for I'm there to defend the gallows tree what am I there for I'm there to um, right a wrong to punish and the final one the oath ring again you know the oath ring is a a metal object that has been forged it has no inherent meaning and yet when we say oath ring we know that it is there to bind is there to bind a person to a purpose and I wear the oath rings binding um, the Lord to the warrior the warrior to the Lord and so all of these objects come to take um, meaning for us and so when you're thinking about Thor in Tewaz with that sense of what do I stand for you can then think about tears, chariot, and eyewears as being what do I what do I surround myself with? What meanings do I make about um, the objects that I have in my life, and whether they are there, you know, for good or for bad? Do they disempower me? Do they uh, do they weaken me? Do they strengthen me? You know, what are the what are the meanings that my environment creates and holds for me? You know, I think about co-creative relationship. You know, we have co-creative relationship with our hearts. We have co-creative relationship with our land. We have co-creative relationship with, with objects, with sacred objects that we make. We have co-creative relationship with our, our bodies and our subconscious minds and our conscious minds. And we're creating meaning all of the time. So Tears Chariot in I Was is inviting us to be very present to that. And to sometimes say, yes, you know, this is a, a powerful meaning for me. This is something that holds me in my purpose, that connects me to my heart, to my Thor and Tewaz energy. And sometimes you might find some things that you go, actually, no, that's, um, that's old. These are old stories that I need to cleanse from this. I don't want that oath ring to hold that oath anymore. I want it to be renewed. I, I want to fell the gallows tree and for it to become something different. I want my sword arm, you know, if you think about Tyr and his sword arm and his um, arm is uh, um, eaten by the Fenris wolf. I was looking for the correct word there. Eaten by the Fenris wolf. And it becomes something different. It becomes a symbol of sacrifice. Still powerful, but a different meaning becomes attached to it. So what are the things that you attach your meaning to that you um, call on? It's almost like anchors into who you are, what you stand for, what you mean. So it's that relationship between the heart and the external world. It's very, very strong for us at the moment. That is enough of me warbling away. Let's see what we have here. Hi Trish, um, hi Esther, lovely to see you too. Hi Trish, yes I am on the mend, thank you. Esther, you've got Gibo for the week. So this is a really lovely energy if we think about this idea of, um, of exchange and partnership, of how, do, how does our inner, our inner life and our outer life, how do they partner with and support each other? Where is, that, where is there a lack of alignment between what we're feeling and what we're projecting out into the world or what we surround ourselves with. Um, what meanings are we associating with, you know, particular actions or objects? Are they healthy? Is that healthy for us? So looking at that exchange all of the time and looking at that balance and saying, OK, you know, when I enter a room, my energetic presence changes the room. But equally, I am changed by the room that I'm in. And I think this is really important for those of us who are highly sensitive that um, there's a lot of literature out there about the way in which our environments influence us but obviously as magical people we recognize that we also influence our environment so for you Esther I really feel into that what is the energetic exchange that's taking place right now between me and the world around me it might be you know through the voice but often it's through symbol and through um, um, energy more than through what we say you know, through those signifiers of meaning that are all around us. You know, I could just look around my room here and see. And I've got a little plaque over here. It's a little white plaque over there. It's my son's um, handprint from when he was one. And it brings this whole, you know, it makes me feel closer to him. It brings his presence into the space. You know, it reminds me of so much. It reminds me of those special times and things like that. And so I resonate, you know, when I bring some presence to it, I resonate with it. I'm glad that it's here in the space with me. So that's the type of thing that you want to be thinking about. Um, uh, uh, excuse me, I've got a cat attached to me. There we go. I am glad I'm feeling better as well, Chen. Suzanne, you've got Athala. Marie has manners. <laughs> Suzanne, you've become the messenger for everybody. Um, let's start with you then, Athala. 
Ooh, that's like that. Uh, there is a, a nice um, segue from Esther's Gibo into your Athala there. I'm feeling that sense of um, environment and the environment being particularly important um, to you. When I feel into this for, for you and the energies that are present for us, I think it's almost a recognition of you as somebody who um, is an energetic tender of land and space. So it's less about saying, you know, where am I in the present moment and more about recognizing your role, that this is something that you do, that this is a, uh, a gift that you possess, is the creation and, um, of environment in a way that is sacred and honoring of that environment. You know, some people will come in and they'll say, you know, I'm going to impose what I want onto this um, environment. You know, human beings are really good at that, aren't we, you know? The Romans were going to create a straight road, you know, straight through nature. We're not going to wind or wend in any way. We're going to just go straight through. And I feel as if the Athalaro has come forward for you to recognise you as somebody who is a tender of land and space. And that that's something that's come, that comes naturally to you. So I just want to invite you into a little bit of presence into that and thinking, does that feel right to me? Does that feel like something that I should claim for myself? Because I think Athalaro is calling you to claim it. Marie has manners. Again, wow, isn't this interesting? We're getting some runes that are very um, similar to each other in many ways with that with the crossbar. So we've got Gibo, which looks like that. We've had um, Athalo, which has got the cross at the bottom and then the sort of hat on the top. Now we've got manners, which has got the cross and it's got the bits down. So there's a real balance there, which is great. I'm really loving your runes. And Marie, I feel a sense less of whereas Suzanne's was looking back in the, in the past and saying, I'm claiming a power that is already mine. For you, Marie, this is much more about saying this um, partnership of Thor and Tewaz and Tears Chariot and the Algis as well, the sort of bringing down of spiritual energy and a standing in the place of heart and the recognising the way in which we act in partnership with the world around us is something that it's a it's a powerful you to claim for moving forward so it's almost saying okay with the energy that algis is offering me with that sense of a deep heart connection that thor is offering me with that ability to create new um, meanings and significations significations is that even a word you can tell me if it's a word um with with objects like in my environment around me and to feel into them and know them as um powerful you know powerful objects that draw energy into them and that create meaning and hold that and contain that for me how does that support me in my sovereignty how does that support me in moving forward and fulfilling my purpose and sometimes it might be about opening into that feeling that alga's energy and the opening of the heart center and sometimes it might be about saying, I'm just going to stand here in this space right now. And then I'm going to open my eyes and I'm going to say, what do I need to change? What do I need to change? And it might be that moving those subtle things around you in your space also starts to, it's a form of weird weaving in itself, of shifting um, weird, those forces of energy that are flowing around you all the time. Remembering what I was saying to um, Esther about... Um, we are always um, resonating out into our environment and receiving back. And for you at this point, it's about saying, I do want to make some actual intentional changes. So closing the eyes, then open again. Do I want to move that picture? Do I want to, um, do I need some flowers over here? You know, what is it that you need to create that? Because this food is about sovereignty. So it's about decisions with the Manaz ring. And then Felicity has Kinas and Dargas. Which is, which is Felicity's weak, weak one? You may not know Suzanne. Okay, um, I'm going to go with Dargaz. So because again, it's fitting really beautifully with this um, the cross energy. It's Dargaz, we've got the cross, and then we've got two lines and um, connecting it. Hmm. I'm feeling the Newman Algas energy quite strongly with this one. There is a sense of um, releasing, of needing to step through and actually literally say, "Yeah, that's done." You know, I'm, I'm, I'm through with that, that's done. I'm, I'm literally seeing it as um, almost like energy trailing out of um, Felicity's back there, moving forward towards the Dargaz um, gateway 
and and red and really about to burst through. I've got a feeling that um, I might be entirely wrong, which because I apologise, but I'm fairly certain that you've had dargas before, Felicity, and that we were talking about standing within the gateway. Was that you or somebody else about standing within the gateway and about being in the moment? This is much more of a saying. You're ready, you know, sort of shoot shoot through. You know, go for it. Um, real confidence, and I'm feeling that with the key Nazarene as well. It's that fire energy of moving forward and not allowing yourself to be held back, not allowing doubt to get in the way, um, following your convictions, following your instincts, um, and when in doubt, feeling where do I feel lightest? You know, where is it? I don't want to. Feel, I don't want to feel a sense of weight. You've got the the dark Azrin, this sort of very effervescent, transformative fire energy and then you've got the key now room as well which i'm feeling it can be an earthy room but I mean, again i'm feeling the fire that creative fire burning releasing no so really go with your convictions felicity is what i'm feeling and allow yourself to move forward this week trish you have gibo as well so i'm going to point you in the direction of esther's reading and i think we've had quite a lot talking about um the partnership of your energy and the environment around you which really feels like a theme for me that's coming through in a lot of the readings but we started with Gibo um, so that sort of simple sense of um, knowing that you project energy out just as you receive in. Uh, Erica lovely to see you too. Chen you've got Feiyu today. Ooh, really lovely flowing energy there. Um, I'm feeling that struck quite strongly with Tears Chariot and Eyewells coming through on the fourth. Um, there's that sense of um, allowing yourself to feel the pleasure of um, objects that you love, it might be like jewellery or clothing that you wear that you love. Um, I'm feeling the sense of um, the presence of Freya within this. She reminds us that um, you know, often in our in in Western culture there, and I think maybe, maybe in the Christian culture a little bit, there is that sense of um, you know uh, luxury or, or beauty and things like that. They can be temptations and they can be a little bit um, you know, well, we need to avoid them. We mustn't get too in the moment with them. And we need to transcend is the, is the word I'm looking for. And Freya says, really, no. She says, don't transcend. She says the transcendence is sometimes found within the earthly pleasures of the moment. You know, within just a, you know, a small, a small trinket, something that's precious that you get to carry with you. You know, um, we were talking about with Tears Chariot in Iwas, that sense of objects or powerful objects. And for me, she's, she's saying that this is about personal objects and so it's really honoring those personal objects again if you are in um if you've been working in the inner circle have a little listen to our story about thor and his wife and the way that she combs his hair and i'm reminded of that the the bone combs that we found these archaeological finds of bone combs with maybe sometimes with the runes of the person's name on that, that for our ancestors, those little, those personal objects were very, very valuable, incredibly valuable. We didn't have, you know, there was none of this um, single-use plastic stuff going on. You had your comb and that was your comb for life. And there was a power within that, and when it was running through your, through your hair, sort of energetically cleansing you, which again, if you listen to the story, you can feel that a little bit more, that they often were, had the, the names carved on them, so they were very much um, objects associated with us, and they were often then buried with us as well. That these personal items, that we don't necessarily want to have like lots of them, but we want them to be precious to us. And they, uh, the role that they can play in helping us to step into ourselves more powerfully each day and to um, work to, you know, as I was saying, with the comb to cleanse, but we can also things that we wear that make us stand in our power a little bit more strongly. So it's looking at those personal objects of power for you, Chen, is what I think that um, Freya is suggesting. Erica, you have eyewares, so very much, very resonant with tear and that sense of the sword arm and the gallows tree and the oath ring. And I'm feeling that probably when I was talking about that idea of um, us being able to weave our weird through conscious work consciously working with our spaces it's a little bit feng shui in some way you know um that interaction with the sacred land that that will be resonating with you i think already quite strongly 
And I think, again, perhaps there's a recognition piece here for you, Erica, of um, thinking about times when we stand in our power, when we're in our half spaces, in our places where we feel a sense of control, where we're doing, and I'm thinking of um, Marie's reading, that sense of the man self, the sovereign self, who says, you know, what needs to change here? And we work in partnership and we co-create with the, the realm and we become interwoven with it in some way and I'm very enmeshed in it so we have that but then we also have the wanderer self if you think about Odin going out across the land um, as the wanderer carrying just his staff equally in his power feeling more deeply into you know the gravity of the worlds that he's in and the song of the planets and the flow of weird as being his spaces of operation. So he's not operating locally, he's operating universally and this sort of staff then becomes the channel through which he draws the energy from above and below. So both of those are forms of power. And I think that perhaps for you, what's being suggested is that conscious awareness of um, when am I, when am I in, enmeshed in, my, in the web of power? that I have created and that I work with and I'm tending my space? And when am I moving through the currents of weird as the wanderer and drawing that energy into me and then perhaps bringing it back into the space of the web, the space of the hearth? Um, so it's, uh, it's very subtle but different ways of operating as a weird weaver. Um, which I know is really important to you, Erica, and is um, your, the focus of your work. So I think that's what's being suggested there. Rima, you've got Ingwise. Ooh, so what Ingwise is one of those runes that doesn't come up as frequently for me in readings, and um, I just love it when it does come up. So we've got our little Ingwise rune. Sometimes it looks like a little DNA helix because it's got the shapes underneath, but often it's the seed. And I'm feeling within that, that sense of the hidden mystery within. So it's that new moon energy of things that are starting but are not yet ripe and ready. And with Thor and Tewaz, that sense of the, the seed of something new that's being birthed within the heart but isn't yet quite known. And being patient and allowing it to um, rise and generate through. And with Tears Chariot and Iwas, the fire that's held within the heart of the yew tree or the, the sap that isn't quite yet ready to rise because the weather isn't quite warm enough yet. So it's saying there is something very precious being tended at this time. Uh, give it patience. Don't um, feel the need to go out too quickly into the world and, and share it or test it. No, give it, give it space and nurture it. Nurture this seed. Now I don't, I'm not getting a sense of what that relates to, Rima, so you might need to do a little bit of digging there to say, okay, how can I work to you know, nurture my own energy or a project that I'm feeling that's coming through or something that I've seen for the year ahead? What can I do to um, tend to that gently and delicately and with patience, knowing that when it's ready, it will burst forth and it will be this um, Ingwaz is you know, the container that contains all of this power within it, but it's not quite ready yet. Wait for the spring to come is what's um, come through. And Lisa... You have got um, algas, so we've got the new moon in algas, so that's a really beautiful one. Hmm. That sense of trusting guidance, you know, now is a great time for doing um, readings, now is a great time for connecting with the gods, but also connecting with your sense of yourself as a spiritual being as well. Um, maybe doing that through some, you know, if, you're, if you have a journaling practice, maybe thinking on that as a topic, you know, what does it mean? For, what does it mean for me to be a spiritual being? Not what does you know the world tell me about you know, being a spiritual being? What does it mean for me? Um, how do I connect with guidance, something beyond myself? You know, how do I do that? What are the methods that I've currently I currently use? What are the ones that I'm interested in? It's almost um, an invitation to explore that through this lunar month with the new moon. That's what I'm feeling. So that starts tomorrow, and to claim the power of algas for yourself, the power of uh, being protected and being in guidance. And I'm really feeling that algas ring traced on the forehead there, Lisa. Um, 
a lot of um, yellows and sort of orange colours. Um, it can come through as a rainbow, but I'm feeling that sort of more effervescent -y warm, you know, that sort of warm sensation of um, algas calling you on, and it's almost saying, yeah, connect with that now because it will stand you in good stead. Um, practice now, connecting in with guidance from spirit because this is a really good time for you to be accessing it and to practice that so that it's there for you um, later uh, in, through the year as well. Alexis, you have got um, Ansu's. Ooh, so Odin is strong for you, which is lovely when he's feeling a little bit retrograde -y. Possibly some frustration with lots of ideas coming through, but it's not yet the time to manifest them. So I think for me, this is really saying, um, get everything down, that's coming down for you on paper, um, let the ideas flow, no, don't start thinking about what do I need to do in order to make these happen because it's not the right time for that to happen, just let the ideas flow through you, do whatever you need to do to open yourself up to them, so some nice walks out in the wind will probably be quite useful, um, listening to music, reading poetry, um, inspiration is the, the word of the week. Um, let yourself open to inspiration, but don't get too hung up on what are the steps that I need to take next, because that will probably lead to frustration because of where Odin's chariot is right now. Um, Cheryl. No problem. I, you, you're probably right, and I will be re I will be resting after this. I just wanted to do Middle Earth readings, Cheryl, for, for this, but you can, feel, you can hear that my voice is going gradually step by step. So you have got Hargalas for this week. Um, the rune of transformation and the storm. And I can actually feel Thor getting a bit excited about that. Um, yeah, he's, he's interested in what the storm might have to hold for you and in the idea of claiming a little bit of power for yourself. Not as a... Um, oh, how am I trying to describe this? Not as somebody who creates uncomfortableness I, when I'm feeling that I'm almost feeling like the sort of you know the nails that get scraped down the blackboard or the like the shattering of glass in some way you know some people who are just um rub you up the wrong way and that's not what I mean and um, that was very specific that was very specific that's not what we mean by disruption but asking those questions of yourself um why not why not is a really useful question for you to ask. The other question that's really useful for you to ask yourself is if you're feeling like, oh, I can't do that, or, you know, it's not right for me, quite yet, it's saying, um, what evidence is there um, that lets you know that's the case? Because I think that part of the Hargalaz, what Hargalaz is doing is saying some of that work is inside. It's to let the old, the shells of the old um, pass and the new step in. So it's and look, this is a good time for for finding limiting um, beliefs or old stories that are holding you back. Let me see. So Suzanne says, lovely, interesting week with Newman and Imark as well, of course. Lovely Imark, which show. So I'm glad that we had um, the Ingu's room there. Um, Michelle. You've got Dargaz as well. Oh, so I'm going to I'm going to direct you to Felicity. Um, Felicity's reading. We were talking about Dargaz, that stepping forth, that energy there. Um, with you, I'm feeling a little bit more. There's a sense of clarity. There's a third eye. You know, it's, it's resonating very strongly at the third eye. Um, new ideas coming through. Trust them. Don't think to yourself, this is um, this is silly. You know, no, I can't possibly do that. Um, you know. Let yourself believe it. Let yourself believe the things that you're seeing, the new ideas that are coming through or the opportunities that are coming up for you. And I think she's like, what would that was a cat falling off a table, by the way? Um, you know, what are the opportunities that the universe is offering up to you and saying, yeah, I do this, you know, try that. Um, allow yourself to believe them and to really open up to that dark as energy. There's an exercise that I teach people very, very important that if you do this exercise, you do not do it for too long because you shouldn't walk around with this for too for too long. But you can imagine that you've got a little dargas rune on your forehead. It's a little gate opening up the third eye. 
and let it opening you up to opportunities that you um, wouldn't otherwise see in the world. Dargas works really, really well with the third eye, but it opens it up very, very fully. So I would only suggest ever doing this for a period of, you know, maybe like two, three minutes um, to get real insight and clarity and then close it back down again. So you don't want to walk around with your third eye massively open. But the Dargas ring works really well for that. For just going, yeah, what are the opportunities that the universe is offering to me that I can't see for some reason? So it's, it's, the, it's that, it's opening up to perception is really important for you, Michelle. Um, even more so than the stepping into it, it's just being aware that there are opportunities out there. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything more to say. It's just, I know, and it, it feels like it's, I should expand on it in some way, but it's literally, you know, when we open up and we see with our whole being, we see so much more than if we're like, no, 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 this is the path, this is the way that I'm going, this is the, this is the road. So I want you to imagine that um, you might have been walking down a road and you're like, I'm walking down the road and I can only see this and it's almost like it's opening up in front of you, almost like um, a twilight pathway. Like I'm following I'm following it. And it's saying, look about, there are actually other roads available. It's just that you've been following this one for so long that you can't feel it. So look for those, look for those other roads and those other possibilities and ask Dargas to help you with that. Alexis says, um, significations is a word. Excellent. Um, Chen, maybe your crystal bracelets for you, that's wonderful. Um, Rima, thank you, that's great. And Alexis, that's all good. Wonderful. It looks like I have got to um, everybody, which is fabulous. Just to say, I am a little bit behind with doing some um, announcements because you know, I've been ill. So we are, launch we are launching. We are launching a new month in the hearth space. We are going to be working with Wayland with the energies of creation and destruction. The newsletter will be coming out this week um, with our inner circle classes around that. And I will be doing a live, as long as my voice is okay, about Wayland and the theme of creation and destruction. Um, the other thing I'm working on at the moment is we have a wonderful program launching on the 7th of March. Um, it's called Runic Astrology, but it is really a deep dive into your personal birth runes. I'm so excited to be offering it. Um, and it is going to be a real adventure for those of you who come with me on this first journey into your birth rooms. It's the first time that I'm running this course in this way. I've worked one-to-one -one with people um, to, to offer them this journey, but the, the course actually has a lot more content in it than even for the people who've done the one-to-one -one work with me before. So it's going to include looking at every aspect of your birth chart. Um, it's going to include looking, you know, taking really deep dives into each of the energies of the planets. And it is going to include um, meditations as well as, you know, this is the you know, information about the planet and how it works. It's also going to include um, meditations and work to support you in your reflection so that you can energetically connect in with your birth rooms. Now, what I want to say is that I am already 95% oh, certain that this course will never run again in the way that it is now because it is such a, you know, a deep dive adventure. And it may well be that it's spaced out and done in different um, components moving forward. But for this first cohort, I want to take people on the full journey and for you to have access to all of the resources for all of your birth rooms. Um, it may well be that you choose to do a deep dive into a few of them and not to go with you know, every planet through the course of the, of, the, of the course, unless you have lots of time available to you and you want to really blow your mind. Um, but we're going to be doing that. So I am planning to do um, a masterclass, a free masterclass about um, birth rooms and runic astrology for those of you who would like to attend prior to the um, birth rooms course. So you are more than welcome to come to that and you'll be hearing information about that coming very soon. Your birth rooms course will include not only the program but a one-to-one -one, um, debrief on your birth rooms, so an intuitive reading with, um, with me about your birth rooms. But what it doesn't include is your birth rooms calculations. A lot of people have already had them done and they have them at the ready. 
Um, and uh, so, so that's not something that we're offering because we wanted to make sure that we kept the price um, as, uh, as low as we could for people to attend. So if you are thinking, oh, this sounds interesting, and I've thought about having my birth runes done before, um, now would be the time to get your birth runes done because we will not be, you know, we won't be able to do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birth runes reports ahead of the, of the course because each um, report takes about two hours to generate. So if you think this is of interest, please do get in touch. You can either order your birth runes report or just get in touch with me if you're not sure what, what's to come next. Um, lovely to see everybody and I look forward to seeing you again very soon through the week once I'm a bit more recovered and I've got a bit more of my voice blessings to all of you um, on the way forward through this week.